Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. The first major story in the Kara arc has concluded, and now you're going to get your reward for all of your patience, an episode about a hot air balloon. Yeah, that's pretty much the premise of this episode of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. It's a denky episode. Aren't those always just the most exciting thing in the world? That being said, it does tie into the overall story of this episode, which for the most part, is actually pretty great. What I really loved about it is that we're finally starting to dive a little bit more into Kara and the influence that they're actually having on the current Naruto-verse. What I mean by that is that while the world of Naruto seems like it's at peace, and for the most part, the only evil things out there are a bunch of random bandits who can get their asses kicked by Genin, Kara slowly but surely has been infiltrating their way into every single major village in the Naruto world, and they're starting to have a massive of effect on that and Konoha Village is the first one to finally start to experience their true terror and what they're actually capable of. This was a great episode if only for the fact that we got to see the return of a lot of classic characters. All the Kages, just the fact that Tsunade returned in this episode was actually kind of remarkable and it's always really cool when you have all the bigwig characters sitting around and talking about the next major villainous group. It definitely gives me vibes of when the Akatsuki were slowly being introduced in the original Naruto and Naruto ship an anime series and this episode right here totally was giving me those vibes and Naruto and all of his associates realize that the world is getting more dangerous and a lot of that is actually owed to the fact that Konoha Village has allowed its gates to be open to the world. People can enter, people can leave and a lot of these people could potentially be working for Kara, and that's when Naruto has to make the tough decision. Do they close the gates of Konoha build Village or does fill that wall? Really? Really? We gotta build that wall? You've been build listening? That wall. Build that wall. So as I was saying, Naruto has to make that big decision if he's actually going to allow Konoha's gates to be open or closed. And that ends up being sort of like the emotional crutch of the entire episode. And juxtaposed to that is this other storyline all about Denki, the young ninja scientist who's working with Boruto and all of his friends to create a massive hot air balloon which is going to allow them to electronically communicate with villages that are a very long way away. And of course, it's the build up to actually seeing this happen and it does end up working. And Naruto actually witnesses this himself and it actually helps him in his decision on what they should actually do about Konoha Village realizing the importance of having connections with all of these other villages and having a line of communication and it's something that at this point they can't simply just cut off it could mean something really bad for the future of the series although he is going to increase security and scrutiny when it comes to looking at people who enter and leave the village now, at the very end of the episode, we get, of course, our big stinger, which is another great scene with Kara, where we get the big confirmation that Victor is indeed alive. He actually survived being swallowed by the massive tree. We don't know how we got out of this situation at all, but the fact of the matter is Victor is alive, and it looks like that while he is aligned with the leader of Kara, Jigen, and all of the other inner members, he seems to have his very own ulterior motives. Even blaming all of the events of what happened with him and his company and the Konoha Ninja, blaming it all on Deepa. But he has bigger plans here. It looks like he's actually going to end up trying and betraying Kara by taking hold of their secret weapon, which is known simply as the vessel. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the rundown of this episode of Boruto Naruto Next Generation. So, not exactly the most exciting episode of the series, but you know what? You need episodes like this. And considering the last episode might have been one of the best episodes of the entire series, I'm willing to forgive this one. I just didn't really care about the story with Denki and the balloon and all that other stuff. Again, it served a purpose, however. It showed Naruto the way things are in this world and reminded him that changing them would be a very drastic and potentially dangerous thing for the world. Konoha Village closing its gates would cause a tremendous amount of anxiety in in the ninja world and it could cause a lot of potential conflict as well and even sort of like worsen a lot of the relations with the other ninja villages so he just realizes that yeah we just got to kind of you know tighten down our security a little bit more and do things uh, you know a little more by the book but again those gates are going to stay open that's just the way that it's actually going to be but everything else with Kara is what really made this episode interesting. Again, just establishing how they've been around in secret for so long, how they've been planting the seeds for what their eventual plan is going to be, and of course learning about the secrecy of their vessel. Now, that's not the first time in the series we've heard the term vessel in Naruto, and for the most part, it usually means a living being, something that's going to be inhabited by something else. 
This is highly reminiscent of what Orochimaru did in the original Naruto series, using Sasuke as his personal vessel to reincarnate himself and take over his body. I'll just say that something probably similar is going to be going on with Kara, and for people who read the manga version of Boruto, well, you know exactly what they're talking about. So basically, that's just pure, unmitigated fan service for people like me who actually read the manga. And I especially love that they're continuing to use the character of Victor. It looks like they might even try to do an entire another arc with his character, which... I want to see happen. I totally want this to go down because, again, this is a character who barely existed in the manga version to the point where you wanted to learn a little bit more about him and what his deal is. And the reason that he was in the manga so shortly is starting to actually be revealed in the anime version. And you can actually see that they're, like, building up to that moment. And I think that that's absolutely remarkable. It, it's rare that they can actually add that anime-only material that really does a great job of building upon that source material. And, man, I'm just pumped to see all of that go down. It is pretty clear, however, that, you know, even though he was able to survive being devoured by a giant freaking plant, that Victor is definitely in dire straits at the moment. He seems to really be struggling here, and he seems like he's on his, for a lack of better word, and yes, this is kind of a pun on his last leg, uh, but I can't wait to see what else he's got planned for the future of the series, because... It is kind of necessary that they keep this character around just a little bit longer, if only to extend more of this anime original content, because when they finally start getting into, like, the bigger Kara content and some of the major arcs that have been happening in the manga, it's only a matter of time before they catch up. So they're going to have to create some more anime original content, and for the most part, it's wholly inoffensive, and if anything, it's entertaining. Like I said, this is also a very nostalgic episode, getting to see the return of a lot of these characters. It's so rare that we even get to see Tsunade yet again, and getting to see her here and doing what she does best, which is being a very wise advisor, is really awesome. Seeing her and Kakashi there was great too, and a lot of the other classic characters of the series, as well as all those other Kages. Really, this was a nostalgic and very slow burn kind of episode, but... I love how the entire episode was bookended with all of the Kara stuff, especially getting to see more of Jigen, the leader of the group at the end, communicating with Victor. I love that he basically talks to him in like this very own sort of like weird pocket dimension that he can sort of summon from anywhere. It's really unique for the series and again establishes that Kara is an organization built upon the foundations of ninjutsu and technology. It's one of the things that make them a really interesting and villainous group. That and just the fact of the matter is they got a lot of style. They're pretty awesome. They really have lived up to, I think, the hype of the original villainous groups that we've seen from the series. Everything from Orochimaru to the Akatsuki. They really are great villains and I can't wait to see more of them. It is kind of disappointing Morning, however, that, and I get reminded of this every week when I watch Boruto, is when I watch the intro, you see all of these other major fights that could potentially happen with Kara, which none of them have happened yet. It makes me feel like they should have created an intro which focused a little more on Victor and Deepa instead of all of these other characters who may or may not appear for a very long time. Again, it's mostly fan service for people who read the manga version, but otherwise, it's some pretty good stuff. And this was a pretty good episode, I have to admit. Even though it featured some stuff that didn't exactly blow me away, the whole Denki hot air balloon subplot, still, I really liked this episode and I'm excited to see more of what the series is going to bring us as we get this much closer closer to some more of that manga material as well as supplementing it with all of this brand new stuff which for the most part they've been very successful at. So I'm giving this episode a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. I want to get your thoughts. Sound off in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about this episode. All of the big information about Kara, the whole Denki hot air balloon subplot and what you hope to see from the future of the series now that we officially know that Victor is indeed alive and still kicking and has some pretty big plans for the future. Let's have a big discussion. Comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please take your nearest kunai or freaking shuriken. Throw it towards that like button. Helps out these videos a lot. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. I also want to take this time to thank all of my patrons. You guys are freaking awesome. I love you guys so much for making monthly donations, giving me feedback on all of my videos. Remember, first-time donators, if you make that first-time donation, I will review an anime series of your choice, as well as you're adding your name to this list of super awesome people, the producers of Ace Guru. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay damn baby.